Well, Tricia, thank you very much for your contribution to our discussion today. I'm Wendy, I'm a GP. This is Treasure Pharmacologist, okay. and we're going to talk about hyperemesis and its measurement. So Treasure, fortunately, hyperemesis is not a common condition, but when it strikes, it can be diabolical. So we can have women who are dizzy, who are tachycardic, who have a significant postural drop, whose urine output is down. Uh, from a pharmacology perspective, look, what's the best strategy when we're confronted with a woman like this in our clinics? Okay, I think we've got to look at um, nausea and vomiting in pregnancy as a continuum and the, the tools in our toolbox are used across that continuum. So if we start off with um, simple morning sickness, which for the patient themselves is not so simple. Um, morning, can, noon and night sickness. Morning, <laughs> noon and night sickness. Mm -hmm. You can divide this broadly into two categories. Women that suffer from nausea and those that have nausea and it goes on to vomiting. And the, um, the drugs that we choose for each of these conditions are slightly different. So the woman that tends to be um, nauseous often does better on a drug that um, aff affects dopamine, like stematol prochlorperazine, a phenothiazine, um, because it's working more on the vestibular apparatus and can prevent them going on to actually starting to throw up. But for the woman that, you know, puts her foot on the floor at seven o'clock in the morning and has to throw up, um, you're going to need a, a broader range of tools. So not only drugs that impact on dopamine, but ones that have prokinetic effect like metoclopramide and that work across um, the neurotransmitters. So drugs that have effect on 5-HT3, serotonin in the gut, as well as in the chemosensitive trigger zone, like metoclopramide, can be quite useful in that regard. Um, other agents that uh, we often get asked about, if we start at the beginning, vitamin B6 pyridoxine. Now, it turns an IV bag yellow, and um, you'll often see it used in the emergency department, but really, um, you've got to use very big doses, 25 milligrams, three times a day. You're pushing up to the sort of doses that, if you need it regularly, um, gives you risk of peripheral neuropathy. So it's not a, a really an effective option in the low doses that are often in morning sickness um, dose forms. Uh, other phenothiazine or antihistamine like drugs such as doxalamine and the old Debendox um, is in the same category as stematol prochlorperazine. If those simple measures aren't working then you need to think, well, where do I go next? And by that stage, you're starting to see dehydration as an issue. Mm -hmm. So it's about how much fluid um, can the woman retain. Um, and if she's feeling really quite ill, there's a role for agents like Ondansetron that are getting more selective agents on 5-HT. Um, and the beauty of drugs like Ondansetron is that they come in not only tablet form but they have wafers and so this can be put on the inside of the mucous membrane and um, it's not dependent upon the the patient being well enough to swallow and retain a mm -hmm. dose. Also Stematol has an option. And Stematol, the good old-fashioned Stematol which is one of my personal favorites, <laughs> um, has a suppository. Um, it's quite sedating so the 25 milligram um, or dose can be a little bit high, so you can take the torpedo and cut it down the middle lengthways um, and give 50% of the dose. Mm -hmm. And often that's quite useful um, for someone going to bed who wakes up in the middle of the night throwing up and it can allow them to get through the night and, mm -hmm. and sleep. And it gives some residual effects in the morning that can be beneficial. Mm -hmm. So if we move beyond the prescription medicines, um, the other option that is um, possible is ginger. And if you'd asked me 10 years ago my feelings about ginger, I would have been a lot more skeptical because we didn't have the evidence base. But as long as the dose form is an effective dose, and many of the commercial ginger preparations are in too low a dose, mm -hmm. um, but if you've got a standardized extract and an effective therapeutic dose, then we've now got meta-analyses saying that it's comparable um, to the simpler agents like 
metoclopramide and prochlorperazine and so we need to be part of that toolbox. Do you have an effective dose? Is there, what should we be looking for? Um, yes, it's in that 150 to 300 milligram mm -hmm. of standardised extract per, per day. dose. Right. Per dose. And um, stematol though, uh, sometimes our, our pharmacology colleagues will say that's a Category C can't be used. Yeah. And, and again, it's about understanding those categories. So category C means it is not causing congenital anomalies. It causes um, fetal toxicity, which is a second and third trimester effect. And so we can use Stematil quite safely early in the pregnancy. And like um, drugs for depression, for example, they will accumulate if you need to keep using the drug reg regularly as mm -hmm. the pregnancy progresses to term. But for most women, by the time they've got to about 12, 14 weeks, they're yes. over the hump. Mm -hmm. yeah. You mentioned the bag of fluid with the yellow. Yes. Um, is there a role for IV fluids? There is a very big role for um, rehydration and mm -hmm. IV fluids. And if we move now beyond the nausea and the vomiting to the hyperemesis, then that is the, the mainstay of treatment, mm -hmm. um, to which we would add um, a ligactyl, chlorpromazine, mm -hmm. which is just an IV form of stematyl in a mm -hmm. sense. So they're all the same family of phenothiazine, just a little bit more potent, and perhaps an injectable on Dancitron or mm -hmm. First Cousin. Are we still yeah. using the um, prednisone and such, or hydrocortisone? Uh, yes, it is mm -hmm. used, but not as routinely as perhaps we would have five years ago because we didn't have some of those stronger antiemetics that can ameliorate symptoms a little bit earlier. So um, the undansetrons? So the undansetrons, yeah. Okay. So the idea is um, for someone that has more than one episode, and you, you, they get to know that their symptoms are evolving, mm -hmm. to get to medical care early so they can be rehydrated, mm -hmm. and we need, don't need to go as far as needing to use the corticosteroids. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. Thank you.